Good morning, folks. We've got a number of items to hit today, including some fine detail and a step back for a macro scale view. We're watching plasma filaments dance around the limb, so let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours were relatively calm once again. Primary feature of note is the large incoming coronal hole. Nice V shape to it there. And this is as the northern active region is now devoid of sunspots. A brief X-ray rise into B-class range this morning was actually the fields ionizing and trying to get the spot going again, but it failed. Solar wind dropping out almost in disappointment with the X-ray production, now entering very calm and quiet solar wind conditions in geospace and a very low KP. Let's come back to the strongest storm on Earth for a moment, taking on Vanuatu and the islands nearby and providing an excellent opportunity to look at the vertical column of the wind which is the same as the global electric circuit columns. Let's go to a wind map and in low pressure like this storm, everything sucks in at ground level, just opposite of high pressure, which pushes out at ground level. Well, where's it coming from in the highs and where's it going in the lows? The answer is the same, the atmosphere above. In the lows, we come to the cloud layer here and find the tube, the ring, the spinning system that is seen expelling the flow up to the jet stream. This is a coherently visible column throughout the sky. That is going to be a theme today, but so is South America, so let's bring them into the discussion momentarily here. Latest soil moisture mapping at surface and root level. Full article is linked below. Now up next, let's combine them, and we're attempting to characterize atmospheric electricity over South America in real time. Back in 2018, a paper by Hay and Hecke was able to prove a 30-minute anomaly in the region directly above the magnitude 8 earthquake in Chile from 2015. It also showed a surge of energy in the final minute before the quake. Now these are tracked as the earthquake fault, long before it breaks, is tied into the global electric circuit and begins interacting before the shaking starts. In this specific case, their attempts to get real time are critical, and while it may have noticed the 30 minute anomaly with 15 minute updates, it's not quite real time and definitely would not have caught that last minute surge. Still a long way to go. Folks, I've been trying to keep at least one thing relatively normal and usual for you guys here and doing my best not to discuss a specific topic, but you should be demanding the same level of diligence from those other folks as you demand here. Public facts and appropriately suspicious speculations are in the thousands of articles and blogs you can find online, but almost nobody is using the preprints. Cornell's Archive, that's A-R-X-I-V dot org. The two places to find those preprints are right there listed at the top of the page. We truly are beyond blind speculation these days, guys, even if it can be fun. There's real work to do, and I demand you demand it of those you let inside your ear. Also, if you only know about this channel, some others, Tony Heller, what's up with that in the climate realm, you should also know Dr. Roy Spencer. He was part of the initial wave of climate modelers with John Christie pictured here with Dr. Spencer and Dr. Happer from Princeton. Interesting, all three of those gentlemen who founded modern climate science disagree with the mainstream story on global warming. And we're back to South America for the third time today. But unlike soil moisture or atmospheric electricity before earthquakes, here the source of the electromagnetic power is purely outer space. One of the single most critical things the climate modelers need to include is the combined induction heating and direct joule heating from the electric fields and their coupling to the Earth system. While these items are being integrated into space and plasma physics, they are largely lacking a place in the climate discussion even among those using particle forcing for CMIP6. It is one of the few places that major, major improvement is still needed in the new data and models. And of course, this is important because sunspots are about to return, and there is the open question of to what extent they will return. The big list of solar cycle forecasts has been updated, and the living review of solar cycle prediction is actually open source and free to read. From scientists who know what they are doing, the lowest prediction is about half cycle 24 strength, which would be a stepping stone down into grand minimum to follow, with the high range on the chart exceeding cycle 24, based on the fact that there is stronger magnetic power on the sun right now than just before the last cycle. We here at this channel use the polar field indicators, and we expect a very similar sunspot cycle to cycle 24 with, of course, the caveat that Earth's magnetic field continues to weaken rapidly. Now, just a last little note here. Did you know that Uranus entered Taurus in the 1770s? 
1772 European crisis weakened England before 1776 and the war that followed. Uranus was also there in the 1850s for the 1857 panic crash, leading into the Civil War a few years later. Uranus was there again in the 1930s, as the Depression led into World War II in the following decade, and Uranus arrived there again last year. A pathogen is just the beginning, guys. We've not seen anything yet. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.